Greetings. First, I'd like to thank my subscriber for bringing this op-ed piece from the New York Times to my attention. And it's fairly important because it talks about prostitution and it talks about the Swedish model. Those of you not familiar in Sweden, as well as in some other Nordic countries, although not in Denmark, the model of prostitution is such that it's legal to sell it, that is, women can become prostitutes, but if you as a man want to purchase their services, it's illegal. Now this article, this op-ed piece, opinion piece rather, is or has been written by someone who apparently had gone through the sex trade and was already a working girl at the age of 14. And a lot of it is just a personal sob story. And of course many of the reasons cited are just personal reasons, emotional reasons. The article or the piece is sort of a <laughs> exercise in emoting. But basically she's arguing sort of for a universal Swedish model. That is, make selling sex legal, but buying sex illegal. Thus nullifying prostitution altogether. Now, she brings up Germany, the country where I live, and Germany has a rather bustling uh, sex market, if you will, prostitution, to my knowledge. And she actually cites this accounts for over 14 billion euros annually in Germany, and uh, she talks about 12-storied buildings that are massive brothels, and uh, that is true to some degree. But there are a number of problems with her approach. One, it's very emotional. Uh, there's no objectivity here. Everything in a capital society is a good or a service. Uh, sex is a good, and it is a service. It can be purchased. Now, whether that purchasing takes place in the context of you taking a woman out to a couple of expensive dinners and she spreads her legs for you, well, that's a different kind of prostitution, or is it not? I mean, people really miss the point. Uh, the whole argument of no Rolex, no sex, uh, this is just a universal. Prostitution in of itself is by far the most honest form of sexual relationship between a man and a woman. There's no BSing, there's no pretending, it's just pay, the mo pay me the money and you'll get sex. And, you know, people brought this up in the comments and it's absolutely spot on. The fact is, is that prostitution is the so-called oldest profession in the world. It's been around since forever, pretty much. And we have a track record of attempting prohibition of various things. In the 1920s, there was, in the United States, there was alcohol prohibition, and we saw what happened there. It was a huge mess. It led to a slew of criminal activity, and they just thought, this is just too much work. We're going to, let's reintroduce alcohol. And it's not to say that alcohol doesn't, is, it, alcohol is a drug. Uh, the, alcoholism is a problem. There's drunk driving. Alcohol can lead to some serious problems. But the problem of alcohol is exacerbated by prohibiting it and making it illegal. Whatever issues and problems and struggles she went through as a young girl, young woman, these are not universally applicable to paid sex workers. In fact, she overgeneralizes and, and actually extrapolates her own personal experience to every experience of a prostitute in the world, essentially. And some of the stuff I brought up recently, the sugar daddies and what have you, that's also prostitution. It's all just prostitution. It's different, different classes of prostitution. Besides, economically, it's very viable. Like I said, it, countries where it's been decriminalized or actually fully legal, uh, prostitution is part of GDP. It contrib contributes to the economic growth of a country. And many prostitutes, such as the sugar daddy sort, or even those who are just doing it on the on the side, they're doing it for other reasons, you know, make making some cash on the side to save towards education or whatever. Uh, it's a very useful service. It's useful for women because that's what women's primary asset is towards, I mean, generally speaking, that's what men want from women. That's what women can give men. And this is something that should absolutely not be made illegal to purchase. I mean, the absurdity uh, behind this is, typical feminist thinking, of course, make something perfectly fine for women, but don't make it fine for men. And prohibition just doesn't work. I mean, the drug war, I don't need to talk about that, and we all know what a mess that is. 
and you just look at Portugal, uh, decriminalize all drugs across the board, and the criminal activity has gone down significantly since then. And prostitution in and of itself, this is the, the stigma that we have to live with, and I don't use prostitutes myself, but I think men should be able to uh, whenever they want, is, is tied into female sexuality, tied into essentially women's primary asset. And this is why it's such a touchy-feely subject. Most people who are, say, progressives, and I'm not, but most people who are progressives can get behind the idea of um, legalizing or decriminalizing most drugs, for example. However, many struggle, particularly women, and then, of course, mangina, white knight-esque um, men, struggle with the idea of allowing women to sell their bodies. But, but once again, I bring to people's attention the woman who goes out on a couple of dates and receives expensive dinners and has the uh, the movie paid for her and then says, oh, I'm going to give it to him now, I'm going to give him some sex, that's really no different. It's just a bit prolonged and a bit protracted and a bit delayed. There's no real difference there, though. Conservatives, on the other hand, uh, who are saying, I'm not a conservative, I'm not anything, obsessed with quote-unquote quote, traditional values and all those things, stuff thinks it uh, sort of diminishes these so-called values and the family and whatever, both are trying to are approaching it from the perspective of you know women's sanctity and the the, ho the holiness of their of their vaginas. But the reality is, uh, it works. It works pretty well in Germany. Having it, I mean, for those who like massive government regulation, it actually works reasonably well in that context. You know, women receive health checks. Um, it's there's less criminal activity in that context. Denmark decriminalized prostitution a while ago in contrast to other Scandinavian countries. And yeah, it's part of G GDP now, more or less. There's, you're not going to get rid of it. That's one thing that pe these people don't realize, these, these, these essentially these loonies who, I mean, the title of this op-ed piece is Buying Sex Should Not Be Legal. And it's insane. You're not going to get rid of it. It's been around forever. You know, as long as there's been civilization, there's been prostitution. And people try to outlaw it, mostly because they're trying to, in the past, they're trying to enforce traditional marriage and values and whatever. But most men have, uh, compared to women, insatiable sexual appetite. And this is, to some extent, being uh, addressed through pornography and satiated through pornography. And then later on through more virtual, so things like the Oculus Rift, virtual reality-based uh, things. But I don't really, I mean... I don't think most MGTOW-minded men have an issue with prostitution. In fact, a lot of MGTOW-minded men use prostitutes. I don't. For me, it's just a waste of money. I'd prefer spending money on well, video games and a decent meal. Uh, the one time I did, I've only once in my life, I was 19. It was my first time in Amsterdam, and I was high off of my mind. And I don't remember it being a particularly enjoyable experience, and I just thought of it at the time as a waste of money. But if men want to frequent a prostitute, why not? And the thing about this is the difference between, say, a conservative and this sort of pseudo-progressive feminist thing is that the conservatives would just sort of outlaw it across the board, you know, no prostitution. Women can't sell it because they have to protect their, the holiness of their vaginas, and men can't access it because, you know, men need to work for the sex in, in a conventional manner. But the pseudo-progressive position is, you know, women get away with it, they can sell it, but you can't buy it. It's just insane. It's absolutely insane. And in a regulated and or legal decriminalized uh, situation, women, like I said, they, they enjoy better health, they, they enjoy protect, better protection under the law. Uh, basically, this, this woman's argument is one-sided. And I should always bring to people's attention and this is, uh, of course, natural human hypocrisy, the reality of selling your body. An American, I mean, let's look at some sport, sporting activities, some sports that are, that are quite physical. American football, rugby come to mind instantly. These men are paid to have their bodies bashed about uh, to receive injuries for people's entertainment. Then you look at some of the more, even more violent versions of sports, such as boxing, cage fighting, tie boxing, etc. I mean, these are men being, quote-unquote, exploited for their bodies. Everything with human beings is a transaction, particularly in a capitalist society. 
you know, everything is a good or a service or something can be bought. Um, men, in the case of athletics and sports, are selling their, their, their bodies to be bashed about for the entertainment of others. They're getting a lot of money for it because people are willing to pay. And, you know, a, a hot 18, 19-year-old decides to become a prostitute to earn some money on the side is, is no different. I don't see any big deal. That I don't see any shame in it. And you know, we, we really tend to focus on the two extremes and this ultra-conservative perspective or the pseudo-progressive perspective. And though there are some liberal-minded progressives who just think prostitution should be decriminalized and what have you, but this system of making it legal to sell but not to buy is absurd. I mean, for people will be run out of business. And I think if you actually have that model, I think that's basically the reasoning behind it. Can you imagine if it were legal to sell it? You had a liquor store and it was it was it were legal to sell the alcohol but illegal to buy it. You'd, you'd go bankrupt, right? And that's the idea. And uh, in the article, it's part of the absurdity, the woman claims that these aren't just sort of losers and loners who are using these prostitutes, but, you know, six-figure salary-earning married men with children, and they should be fined to pay for the education and the, the board of, of women in prostit- prostitution circles and whatever. Just an incredibly myopic and small-minded view of the world, and one that's just impractical. And I think it might be a good point to point out some of my new subscribers, and thank you for subscribing to me, those are the newcomers. Uh, for many of you, this is old hat. I'm not a ain't political anything, at least specifically. I'm not a conservative. I'm not a progressive. I'm not a libertarian. I'm not a a, a liberal. I'm 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 not anything. I tend tend to take each issue on its own, and I tend to look at the merits, and I look at what the data tell me. And above all, I think I'm a pragmatist. I mean, if something runs too too counter, or too strongly counter to human nature, such as you know, prostitution, been around forever, it's probably a bad idea to outlaw. It's probably a bad idea to, to get rid of it. It doesn't work very well. Likewise, if you look at the evidence, say Native American cultures, and as well as other cultures across the globe, human beings have been using different forms of opiates for probably millennia. Now, there's strong evidence for that, uh, particularly in, in North and South America in Native American cultures, why, why would you then try to ban that? If we have a natural inclination, some of us, or has it at least been well-documented historically that opiates have been used for quite some time, trying to get rid of them isn't going to work because they've been so ingrained historically in the culture. And indeed, some people have a natural tendency, individual tendency, to want to use them more than others. So pragmatically, uh, I just think we should be we should at least, the very least, decriminalize drugs, legalize drugs across the board. Same thing with prostitution. And we need to get away from this emotional, emotive perspective on, on things. I mean, whether we like it or not, it certainly doesn't make us feel good. We're all objects. We're all objects in the society. We're all just a, a means to an end to someone. If you're working for a particular company or selling a service... Now, it might not be your body, but it might, it's going to be the works of your mind and the, and the output of that mind. This is really no different. Um, you're not a human being in the eyes of a company, no matter what they might claim and no matter what services they might render in, in your name. Everything is just a, a means to an end, and especially in a, in a capitalist society. We live largely in, for the most part, capitalist societies. This is just something we need to come to terms with, and getting it all teary-eyed and, and whiny about it isn't really going to help help us come to terms with it. And it's also not going to help us facilitate uh, a society which makes these natural human tendencies work well and efficiently. And because if we go against the pragmatic route, what you know, things that come naturally to human beings, such as some people using opiates and drugs, and many, many men who enjoy sex and want to use prostitutes because it's cheap and efficient, or even if it's not cheap, it's just you know, gives you more variety, sexual variety, you're going to have a problem. So we need to come to terms with this collectively as a, as a, as a species. And women, and, and in general, in particular feminists, really, this is more fucking crap they're throwing us. And the problem here, of course, is that conservatives might even get on board with this because conservatives don't like prostitution because conservatives want women to be sort of hallowed and, 
and uh, exemplified as, as these uh, creatures of virtue when they're no more virtuous than men are. Anyway, enough on this topic. Uh, I will be posting more. And I, I mentioned recently that I'd be making a video on the Second Amendment and gun rights and, and different policies across different countries. And that'll be uh, coming up sometime next week, hopefully. So until then, everyone take care and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And, of course, may your chosen deity watch over you. Bye-bye.